nothing in the world like Action Park. First time in Action Park and I love it. They have more water rides here than anywhere in the world. Action Park, an amusement park with an infamous reputation, hundreds of injuries, and even six deaths. Oh, and a feature film starring Johnny Knoxville, where even he stated that filming Action Point injured him more than any movie that he had ever been a part of, which I think is saying something pretty big. I'm Johnny Knoxville. I'm going to grind this rail. Now, Action Park features three terrifying attractions, Water World, Motor World, and the Alpine Center, all three with their own extensive histories. But this story doesn't just start with the opening in 1978. This story starts all the way back in 1935 with the birth of Eugene Mulville, the future creator of Action Park. Now, Gene, as most people would call him, would grow up in West Orange, New Jersey, where he would spend the first half of his years working on Wall Street as a stockbroker. Unfortunately for Gene, that wouldn't last long because he would be let go for supposed stock manipulation. After Gene's department from Wall Street, he decided to go off into other business adventures. He pivoted into real estate development and then found himself working in the amusement park industry. His interest for extreme sports and adventure led him to create one of the most notorious amusement parks ever, Action Park. Mulville's vision for Action Park was rooted in the idea of giving every single guest their own opportunity to push their extreme limits as they went into the park. His goal was that he wanted people to feel the rush of going into an amusement park and actually feel real authentic danger. He believed that a truly thrilling amusement park should have actual potential for danger and not just the illusion of danger. And no shocker, this philosophy and way of thinking when building an amusement park led to rides not only just being dangerous, but straight up completely hazardous. Mulville was willing to try any idea no matter how far-fetched it seemed. Now, Mulville had a very rebellious attitude in the way he ran Action Park. Nine out of ten times, he was completely resistant to conventional safety methods and preferred to operate the park with very minimal oversight. He was known for saying, if you're not bleeding, you're not having fun. Which, that quote fully embodies the entire idea of Action Park. He also frequently clashed with local authorities because everybody was doing whatever they could to get this park taken down. But Mr. Eugene self-insured the park through a company that he also owned himself, which allowed him to bypass a laundry list of safety requirements that most people would have to follow when running an amusement park. So now that we know a bit about Eugene Mulville, let's get into what actually made this park so dangerous. Starting with my personal favorite ride, the Cannonball Loop. The Cannonball Loop was a water slide that featured a complete vertical loop at the end. While they were testing out this Cannonball Loop, they would send test dummies down to, you know, test it. Now when these test dummies would come out, they would either be decapitated or severely injured to where if any person were to go inside of it, they would likely meet catastrophic injuries. But Eugene had to have his answer on whether or not he could open this, so he had to send a real person down, obviously, it couldn't just be a guest first. So his strategy for doing that was paying one of his employees a hundred bucks to test it out for him. Early riders of this would often complain about injuries in their back, broken noses, and probably the most disgusting of them all, getting cut by teeth that were lodged into the slide from previous riders. Yeah, that's right. People would slam their face into this slide going so fast that their teeth would be stuck in the slide where anyone else who went down the slide would just get their backs completely cut by some dude's yellow tooth. And it sucks because the concept was so sick. My roommate actually built a human loop slide that he did, and he explained that as one of the most terrifying things he'd ever done. But I'm glad to see that I know somebody who's pulled off the human loop. It's a cool design. I'll give, I'll give Eugene that. The next amazing feature of Waterworld was the wave pool, which most people nicknamed it the grave pool because of the drownings that would always occur there. This was one of the first wave pools in the entire country, so not much had been done to replicate what a successful wave pool looks like, but this one was definitely one of the most dangerous. This pool was a recipe for disaster, unpredictable waves, overcrowded conditions, and a wide range of swimming abilities. Lifeguards reported up to 30 rescues on a busy day. For the years of this park being opened, three people would drown in this pool. First fatality occurring in 1982 with a 15-year-old boy. Despite its absolutely deadly reputation, this in no way affected the owner, Eugene, and how he wanted to operate his amusement park, and everything would still run pretty much the exact same. 
The Tarzan swing offered guests the thrill of swinging like a jungle hero before plunging into icy cold spring water. The shock of the freezing water often led to panic whenever guests would fall into it, which would lead to even more injuries. The cold water alone could cause swimmers to go into shock, which happened to one swimmer. In 1984, a man had a heart attack and drowned in the Tarzan Swing swimming area after hitting the cold water. A few other rides Waterworld had to offer was Surf Hill. Surf Hill was a high-speed slide where guests would race down a steep hill on mats. It sounded fun in theory, but this ride was notorious for causing injuries. Riders frequently flew off their mats, crashing into barriers or each other. Friction burns, head injuries, and broken bones were often common. But nothing I don't think was any more terrifying than the real-life kayaking experience. The kayak experience allowed guests to paddle kayaks through a water course with artificial rapids created by underwater fans. But the rapids weren't the only danger. In 1982, a 27-year-old man fell out of his kayak and was electrocuted by exposed wiring from the fans. The ride was immediately shut down, but not before it claimed a life. And last but not least for Waterworld, they had a cliff jumping section too, which doesn't sound too dangerous inherently, but uh, Action Park did also offer a open bar. And the amount of times people would just jump at the same time and collide into each other, you could probably estimate that to be in the hundreds. Luckily, no deaths here, but lots of injuries. So that concludes our Waterworld segment. Now we're going to touch on a part of the park that I believe to be the absolute most terrifying and dangerous part. The Alpine Slide. The most common injuries on the Alpine Slide were severe abrasions, cuts, and extreme burns. Since the track was made of concrete and when riders fell off the sleds, which happened frequently, they would scrape against the rough surface, often suffering deep cuts and friction burns. Many riders described their injury experience as being tossed in a cheese grater. Riders always being seen covered in bandages, which was a common sight at Action Park. Riders frequently suffered broken bones like wrists, collarbones, backs. These typically occurred whenever the rider would lose control and fly off of the ride. Collisions with track walls and other riders was a very common experience. And the amount of people that would fly headfirst in the dirt and rocks and sticks was unbelievable. Nothing more unbelievable than the death of George Larson Jr. in 1980. The most tragic notable incident of the Alpine Slide occurred in July 1980 when 19-year-old George Larson Jr., an employee at Action Park, died after being thrown from his own sled. Larson's sled either malfunctioned or hit a large rock, causing him to be thrown from his sled off of the ride. He would unfortunately pass away a few days later from the incident and all the trauma, and he was the first of six deaths at Action Park. This event at least led to a bunch of scrutiny with Action Park and a ton of lawsuits. Lawsuits related to injuries on the Alpine Slide were common through the park's operation. The ride alone accounted for the majority of the injuries at the park. This was reported by the first aid station at Action Park, which treated as many as 50 to 100 injuries on a busy day. And due to that way of thinking, the Alpine Slide became the most notorious section of Action Park, and still to this day remains to be one of the most talked about attractions. So now that we've gone over Waterworld and we've gone over the dangers of the Alpine Slide, last but not least, we're going to cover Motor World. Motor World had a plethora of fun, extreme, exciting rides, such as super go-karts, battle action tanks, super speed boats, and bumper boats. And they had kamikaze go-karts. We're going to get into that first. Kamikaze go-karts were a variation of the super go-karts that they also had. These go-karts were designed with the higher top speed and way sharper turns you had to make on the course. Due to the increased speeds and more difficult track layout, the kamikaze go-karts were even more dangerous than the regular go-karts. Without seatbelts or roll bars, people were often ejected after these crashes flying god knows how far out of their go-karts. The vehicles in Motorworld were typically modified to exceed their actual intended speed making them very difficult to control for inexperienced drivers. That combined with the lack of maintenance on these rides made this an extremely dangerous combination. Since these death carts would typically come with faulty brakes and leaking fuel, injuries were just an inevitable part of Motor World. Mixed with their lenient rules towards alcohol, people would typically be completely drunk driving these go-karts at high speeds, slamming into each other. And unfortunately, in 1984, another life would be taken. Donald DePass drowned in the man-made pond while riding the super speedboats. DePass was riding a speedboat when he fell off the vessel and became trapped underneath. Due to the poor water clarity and fuel leaks, dirt, and debris in the pond, the rescue efforts were delayed. DePass was submerged for several minutes and couldn't be revived. He was pronounced dead shortly after being pulled from the water. So after going over Waterworld, Motorworld, and the Alpine Slide, going over the laundry list of injuries and deaths that happened as a result of the poor maintenance, poor work culture, and overall neglect of the people's safety, 
Action Park couldn't continue forever. By the early 1990s, the dangerous legacy that the park was bringing was starting to catch up to itself. All of these mounting lawsuits would force Action Park to close in 1996. Action Park was realistically a one-of-a-kind experiment with itself, pushing the limits of what an amusement park could realistically do. It's a true story of recklessness and caution being completely thrown to the wind. But I will say, to those who may be watching this video who have experienced Action Park, or know somebody who has experienced it, I am a little jealous. Because nowadays with how regulated everything is, it seems like you just want to have that bit of freedom. But maybe that freedom that we don't have is really protecting us from ourselves. After the park's closure, Mobile continued to live in New Jersey, where he would continue his business ventures in real estate. Despite all the controversies of Action Park, Eugene Mobile remained completely unapologetic about the entire idea of Action Park. He believed that his unique approach to amusement park rides really offered genuine thrill and excitement, whereas other amusement parks gave you the idea of thrill and excitement. But that concludes the brief history of Action Park, the fatalities there, and everything that went wrong with it. If you guys enjoyed this video, let me know down in the comments below. If there's anything that I missed, feel free to let me know. And if there's any topics you guys want me to go over, let me know in the comments.